stack charts are a great way to examine multiple signals simultaneously while maintaining synchronism typically in time or, or at least along the independent variable. When you zoom in or zoom out all of the these signals respond accordingly. I want to illustrate how to do this with a number of different types of signals that have been generated. One of those is a sine wave output that produces an array of sample points. Another is a Boolean array of the same size. So the way I've set up that comparison operation, the Boolean output will be a true value once each cycle of the sine wave. Now the stack chart indicator is a point by point type operation, so it works best within a for loop or a while loop structure. I want the graph to operate over one complete cycle of the sine wave output. So the for loop will then operate over the exact number of samples that exist in that array. Now the absolute value is an example of taking a value derived from that original array and doing some operation on it. You'll notice that there are a variety of point by point operations and, and a wide variety. You've got filters and noise generators and all sorts of signal generators and signal processors available. And I begin then by placing a chart and I put that inside the loop. And we use a cluster bundler to join all the signals of interest into a single chart. And the direction or the order in which you wire these from top to bottom also reflects the order in which they appear on the stack chart. Now we've got a broken wire feeding the waveform chart and that's, as it turns out, due to the mixture of the Boolean data type and the doubles. And if we first convert the Booleans into a numerical data type, then, we're, then we are in business. Next, back on the chart, do a right click and select Stack Plots. And we see four distinct plots. And that looks pretty good. We can see that multiple runs generates, a, generates different results. If you look carefully at it, you can see what's happening with the absolute value of the sine wave and the Boolean type. Now another nice thing about the stack chart is the ability to see the waveforms unfold in time. If I slow down my, my loop time, then we can see those waveforms evolving in, in a way that we can better understand what's happening. The index display gives you the ability to configure each of the plots independently. And the color code is a nice way to, to quickly see which plot you're dealing with. A nice way to display Boolean data types, especially if they're impulse-like uh, in nature, is to simply sh show it as a straight line any time that it's a 1. Other things you can consider would be showing the line as well as the data samples, and that can be important if you're needing to get a better handle on exactly what is being plotted.
Now this graph palette is the place where you can exercise a lot of control over zooming in and zooming out over specific time ranges. We can pan back and forth. And again, you see that all of the waveforms maintain their synchronism with each other. This X scroll bar allows you to see all of the chart history. Ever since we started applying data to that, that chart, it's all available in that buffer. So in fact, that's the entire history of what's been applied to the chart so far. Let me speed up the loop just a little bit. All right, that looks good. Let's take a look at the different types of modes that are available for updating the chart. This is the traditional oscilloscope method of completing a single trace and then refreshing by blanking the, the screen and plotting again. The strip chart mode uses the big red line to say where the most recent value is being applied, but it does not erase uh, beforehand when it starts that refresh. So you really have a lot of different options about how you interact with the graph and how you can uh, either zoom in or zoom out. I'd also like to point out that it's very easy to change the labeling for each of your graphs. You can also change the range of display. Uh, when you do that, make sure you disable auto scaling, otherwise it will have a tendency to revert back to the automatically selected values.